Hey, I'm Paul Spontia. I'm the CEO of the IT company. All of our videos are really designed for one thing, to help business leaders understand how to align IT with their business strategy so that they can go further faster. Further faster means make more money and have more fun. That's ultimately what we want you to do. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Hey there, I'm Paul Spontia. I want to take just a few minutes and introduce myself and my friend Hank. Um, again, I'm Paul. I'm the CEO of the IT company. Uh, the IT company helps small business leverage technology to create better business outcomes, to help businesses grow faster, help them make more money, help them be secure and protected and mitigate risk. And I've been doing this for, golly, I guess a little over 20 years and helping people um, really use technology, make the most of it. And a lot of our world has shifted to a lot of what Hank and I are talking about, which is a lot of uh, risk management and risk mitigation and um, crisis preparation and et cetera. So um, I just I want Hank to introduce himself, just a quick background on you, and then uh, and then tell us a little bit about sort of what you've been doing um, in this space and, and kind of your heart behind it. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity to talk here. Yeah. So Hank Brown, uh, I'm a retired U.S. Marine, grew up uh, here in Tennessee as an outdoorsman, was an Eagle Scout. Uh, served our country. It was a privilege too in the Marines for 20 years. And uh, the last thing I did was uh, was one of the original members of U.S. Cyber Command. And uh, as I worked to uh, be one of the many people helping to build that organization, I became more aware of the risk uh, that we are incurring in cyberspace. And as I studied it, found that there are actually a lot more risk than just cyber mm. uh, to what I'll call our infrastructure. Uh, our infrastructure is electricity and the internet and all of the things that have dependencies upon those. And, and so I think we'll probably talk about it at a later date, but just as a short list, and you can, uh, you can read a book by Ted Koppel called The Lights Out if you'd like to kind of delve a little bit deeper into each of these. Oh, I read it, by the way. It's great. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, so, uh, so naturally, a cyber attack or just a failure of our, of our internet, if you will, from, it could be from a uh, natural disaster or something like that. Um, electrical failure could be purposeful, could be uh, seasonal, could mm -hmm. be a natural disaster, um, could be due to old equipment, and those two things are tied closely together. Um, electromagnetic pulse created by one of our nation's enemies or a terrorist uh, can have a degradation significant mm -hmm. on um, our electrical systems. Solar flare uh, is, a, is certainly a distinct risk and completely, well not completely, but largely unpredictable, especially with a longer view. Um, and then uh, I feel like I'm missing one of them here. The cyber terrorist attacks or anyway, I'll probably think of it here in a second. But all those things are, they're related to each other in that one could make the other worse or mm -hmm. caught, or if, let's say there was a electrical outage due to, um, to, due to heat. You know, more people are, are turning on appliances than there is electricity mm -hmm. to provide. And that can cause wires or transformers to overheat. Uh, and so if, those, if that's happening, there could be a localized outage of power. Uh, but then a, uh, a malevolent cyberspace actor could uh, use that event, uh, and it's called obfuscation, to um, then do a cyber attack and make it appear that it's related to the natural event. Mm. So uh, mm. you know, they may not want to get caught. They may not want to have the United States see that as an act of war. And so then they could uh, obfuscate their actions underneath that and have a more widespread or lasting effect under it. So that's how those things are interrelated with each other. So this was all, this was uh, perhaps initiated by my experience at Cyber Command, but um, is entirely a, uh, a result of my own studies uh, to what the risk might be. And uh, really was, as I mentioned, the book lights out, started there and I was like, wow, there's, there's a lot more to this than I realized. And so as I began to understand these risks, I began to also uh, take actions to help protect my family from them. And as we've done that, I thought, well, perhaps I have maybe some unique experiences that give me a vision and understanding for this that others might not have. Mm -hmm. And if I can help them, uh, now is the time for me to help you, not after some event like this has occurred. So it's hard I, to help somebody once it occurs. It is hard to help. It would be hard decisions and we're all better off if everybody can help themselves. Yeah. So the, the planning assumption is if there's some disruption to our infrastructure, uh, that uh, services that you normally rely on may not be available. And so can you create a temporary buffer for yourself and your loved ones to provide for yourself for likely um, needs or even small emergencies? Uh, and, and by doing that, you reduce the burden on the services that remain, uh, enabling them to help others who are not 
prepared or may have a more serious condition. But also in terms of resourcing in general, uh, it enables the government to provide resources toward mitigating the actual cause rather than trying to treat symptoms of it. Yeah. So that's, that's my vision for it. Um, I find it very challenging. Uh, I think that people are uh, generally, uh, they're kind of an extreme. They either are full prepper, and so you'll hear me say, so I don't view myself as a prepper. I view myself, that's, that's like who I am, but I do want to be prepared. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, maybe an adjective rather than a noun, I don't know. Um, so, uh, so I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, to, for this to be a self identity, if right. you will. Um, well, and you're not talking about being able to live off the grid for three months or no. nine months. You're talking about, like you said, buy yourself time and space, make better decisions, you know, for yep. your family. Temporary buffer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, and, and you've written a book, Mm -hmm. You've got a Facebook page um, and a website. Um, it's all called Plan Bravo, mm -hmm. right? And so I want to make sure people know about that. Um, I've read, I've read the book. I, I follow the Facebook page, and uh, I, I will say uh, there's a lot of great information, mm -hmm. you know. And I think that uh, I would encourage anybody watching, listening to this, to go there uh, to to Google Plan Bravo, to Google Hank Brown, and and uh, and read it. And, and realize that this isn't about um, uh, going crazy or, mm -mm. like I said, trying to live off the reservation or anything like that. And not that there's anything necessarily wrong with that, but this is about basic needs being met in the midst of a crisis that we don't expect. As we talked about living in COVID-19, nobody expected it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I, I lived through uh, Hurricane Andrew back in 1992. Um, I, I, I worked there and right like three days later, and uh, I saw people that uh, their entire lives were wiped out mm -hmm. and were living in tents. And uh, I don't know how you prepare for that necessarily, but I do know the things that we've talked about, like they didn't have running water. Like they just, they, all those things were gone for, mm -hmm. a, for an extended period of time. And uh, if it weren't for FEMA and the, the um, National Guard and stuff, it would have been a, a real, it was already a, a bad disaster, but it would have been a lot worse. So right. to your point, as I tie it all together, I think, uh, you know, being prepared with plans so that maybe we as a, com a country or community can take some of the pressure off of some of those things so they can really focus on the most critical needs um, would be a big deal. Right. Would be a big right. deal to everybody. Every, every household that's prepared to be able to stay home and take care of itself for a couple of weeks is one less household that would be in need in a disaster like you described. Mm -hmm. And I do want to comment on that just for a second. So. Um, there's a phrase called situationally dependent um, that I think is generally used in the military. It's used to, to say, you know, you can't take like one tactical plan and lay it over every situation. Right. And so you can't take, you know, you said, how would you prepare, be prepared for Hurricane Andrew? So typically, I think that people should be prepared to stay home uh, rather than in the prepper parlance bug out. Because uh, I think that generally speaking, you're going to incur more risk by leaving the resources that you have. Yeah. Um, especially if there's some type of uh, physical threat or something mm -hmm. like that. But it is situationally dependent. So I've also lived on the coast, and uh, the house I lived in uh, experienced a couple of hurricanes, one of which um, was, was devastating. And in, in that situation, so in that situation, I do think people maybe should have more of a be ready to leave because one of mm -hmm. the most likely risks is a hurricane. Yeah. Um, here in the hills of Tennessee, uh, we don't have that risk. There's, mm -hmm. there's, so it's less likely that we would need to leave and probably more likely we should be prepared to stay. To stay yeah. So um, every decision in terms of how you prepare, you know, and it's it's free for you to think about this, right? It doesn't, yeah. it, it, maybe it takes the resource that you might be thinking about something else, but uh, it's to analyze your situation. And I have tools in my book on how to do that mm -hmm. and say, oh, okay, how do I prioritize these things now? Mm -hmm. uh, so um, my biggest challenge really though is getting people who are not thinking about this already to actually give it some thought. And yeah. so I appreciate the shout out on the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, you may or may not have noticed, I haven't posted, I was posting two or three times a week and I haven't posted in a couple of weeks because I've said, you know what? I don't think anybody's really reading it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it doesn't give me any personal satisfaction to just yeah. throw something into cyberspace uh, and to spend the time and energy to do that. So right now we're kind of reanalyzing, mm -hmm. you know, what we might be able to share with others. Uh, it is my family's shared belief that the time for helping people is now. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help you or your family uh, to be more prepared now, 
Um, pragmatically, if you know me, that may be one less person that's showing up at my house. But the reality is we, we wouldn't be able to help you then, and mm -hmm. we can now. Uh, and so you, you can do that with very minimal investment of your time and energy. You know, it's interesting. Um, we didn't plan to talk about this at all, but the, the situational piece, really, piece is really interesting. I, I, I grew up in Florida, actually, mm -hmm. on the coast. Now I live in Tennessee. And uh, the way that I might think about this would be significantly different because the it, it, as it would be if I lived uh, even more remote because mm -hmm. if I lived more remote I'd have to be I'd have to think about being completely cut off mm -hmm. you know I lived in Carryville for, um, for several years and uh, I remember the first year I lived there it snowed probably 15 inches and it was very difficult to give up because we were in the mountains mm -hmm. and it was very we we're stuck you know we had a generator you know and everything else but we were stuck and so thinking about if you live remote, if you live in the suburbs, if you live on the coast, I mean, those are all very different scenarios that you have to, you have to prepare for. And even like being someone that lives inland, we can actually help our family prepare who lives on the coast by mm -hmm. saying we could be a resource for That's you. That's right. And you know? we've had people, we've had multiple families evacuate here yeah. from the coast during hurricanes. Yeah, so it's, a, it's so. an interesting thing to think about, like just, again, we talked about it just being simple like that's actually pretty simple mm -hmm. like hey we can be a resource for you and you can be a resource for us and, right and this is how we're going to go about doing that um, i was even thinking as we were talking earlier you know i uh, i bought a, a camper in the midst of buying that camper i basically created another home right and i had to buy everything you know dishes and like i'm like oh i guess in some ways i created a means <laughs> to, you know that if something happened i could take it somewhere yeah like I or could, you could house somebody else or I could house somebody else right yeah. my wife there. actually said that she goes you know if this happened could such and such stay in our camper I was like sure you know mm -hmm. we we actually have a sewer hookup at my house and I have a 30 amp circuit at my, that I had put in to hook the camper up at my house you know and so that camper um which it, it was amazing how much electricity it took when I got my power bill last <laughs> month <laughs> but, yep. but uh but anyhow so I think but I, I do want to point out something about what you said and that is so you bought a camper for recreational reasons, so it's not like you had this big expense no. to be prepared. Right. Um, but having taken some time to give it some thought, based on your situation, you've identified uh, ways that you can be more prepared with stuff that you already have. Yeah. And uh, and I'm also an IT professional, so uh, you know there there are uh, there's very much similarities here. Um, one of them is is that no situation is dependent. So mm -hmm. people for um, you know, if they want to have a coop plan or uh, if they want to have a plan for, you know, what people call a breach, um, you know, you can download a standard plan, yeah. but every situation is different. So you can't take a standard plan and, and lay it over non-standard situation, uh, whether it's your household um, or whether it's your business and expect it to work well. Well, and to your point, I mean, we have a lot of customers who we've had to educate on that because they said, well, don't you have a disaster recovery plan? I'm like, well, my plan isn't your plan. Like, you know, I... I don't know like what office you're going to go to. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can't use my disaster recovery. You, I need to have one and you need to know that I have one and that I'm going to execute it and that I test it and stuff. But mine isn't yours, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and we do stuff, you know, I think just simply from an IT perspective, like simple things that cu customers can do. We do this ourselves or companies can do is, you know, we have extra, extra switches, extra firewalls, extra routers, extra computers, for our customers purposes like you know but um but we don't certainly have enough to handle every single customer that can right. happen but um, you have but created have, a, have, some buffer we have created a buffer right you know and, and right. we've used that buffer a lot i mean we mm -hmm. have used that for customers on multiple occasions and uh, and to the point that we talked about earlier with covid like we've created some buffers now that say only these certain people can be at the office at the time we have to be separated you know as we were dealing with you know the covid 19 pandemic not necessarily not because we fear uh, anybody getting really, really sick, although that is a consideration, it's a it's actually a business continuity issue mm -hmm. because if eight, nine, ten people in an organization all of a sudden got sick, had to be isolated and didn't feel well and couldn't work for three or four days, that would be an operational challenge. So I guess my you know, my wrap up to that as we talk as this is sort of an introduction is um, I love you don't have to be a prepper to be prepared. You know, because that is true. I think you can take some basic steps. Um, in a business, in a family, um, and it just has to do with having conversations, like you said, and uh, making some small decisions. So my encouragement to anybody listening is uh, download Hank's book, um, connect with him on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever, um, and, uh, and, and take some small steps.
you yep. know, just take yep. some baby steps and, and, uh, but, I'll, but don't stop there. Like, don't just make a couple steps and then be like, all right, I, I have extra water. Yeah. <laughs> well, and fun. I want feedback. I mean, feedback is affirmation that somebody's paying attention. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we all, we do have the uh, Facebook page. We're going to try to start doing maybe more video stuff rather mm -hmm. than uh, me posting some comment. Uh, we were starting something on Instagram. Uh, there is a Plan Bravo webpage, and you can download the book for free on the webpage if you'd prefer to do that. It is for sale on Amazon because a lot of people just want to buy the book. Mm -hmm. And it's designed with, like, notes pages so you can write in it and have it as a handbook yep. uh, if you'd prefer that. But What's the website? Is it just Plan Bravo? It's uh, planbravo.org, yeah. Dot .org, okay, good. All right, well, go to planbravo.org, download the book. Um, certainly, I know Hank's not in this for... For any financial gain, but it wouldn't hurt to buy the book either. <laughs> yeah. help, no, I'm in it purely for financial loss. <laughs> I can assure you. The cause, so. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and I uh, appreciate it.